Every Thursday night growing up, my family had, it was like family night. It was the one night a week where, where we all got together and my mom would, would oftentimes cook or we would go out to eat. If we would go out to eat, we were not allowed to ever order Coke, soda or anything. Not just because my mom's healthy, but because my parents are like, no, we're not spending money on that, you know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We would always make chocolate chip cookies. I say we would make cookies. We would actually put the batter together and some of the dough would end up in the oven. Most of it would get consumed before it, it got baked. And we would watch the Cosby show. It was always like, man, this is like, man, Bill Cosby, man, the perfect dad, the perfect family. It was like, if Jesus were alive, he would be hanging out with the Cosbys. Or so we thought, look like that on TV. Just like people look at your social media and think you got it all together. Oh. If Jesus were alive today, would he be hanging out with your family? Like, it would be, would, would, out of all the families, would he say, oh, I pick your family? Or you're like, no, Jesus, certainly. I don't even hang out with my family. <laughs> when Jesus was alive, there was a family he hung out with. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, who was the youngest. Like, Jesus was super close with this family. He loved this family. So when Lazarus got sick, Mary and, and Martha, the older sisters of Lazarus, any, any, anyone like you have a little baby brother and like you kind of raised that brother and you made sure everything was taken care of, they got sick. And so they sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Notice they didn't tell Jesus what to do. I, I read this and I'm, because I'm always telling Jesus, like, Jesus, this is wrong and here's what you need to do. They're just like, yo, we, we know Jesus. He loves us. If he knows something is wrong, Jesus is going to do what's best. The one you love is sick. And so Jesus hears this and what does he do? Nothing. <laughs> he stays where he is. He delays. Why would Jesus do this? Do you enjoy delays? Tonight, my son and I, my oldest son, we're, we're flying out of LAX, and I'm, I'm just, I don't want there to be a flight delay because flight delays can be frustrating. It's like, I don't want to delay getting to Madrid. I want to get to Madrid because we're there for a short time before we head to the Middle East. I don't want a flight delay. Have you ever had a package get delayed? It was supposed to be delivered, and you're like... It, it gets delayed. It's frustrating. You order food, Uber Eats, or DoorDash, and it's late. There's a delay, and you're like, this is so frustrating. There are delays that are frustrating, but can we acknowledge there are delays that are devastating? Where you're waiting on your insurance to approve the medical procedure, but that approval has been getting delayed, that can be devastating. When you're waiting for the court docs to be processed because you need that to happen and, and, and it's been, to, it, there are delays which are, which are devastating. You go to the hospital to visit a loved one thinking that they're going to get out of the hospital and all of a sudden you realize there's been a delay, there's a 5150 hold. And it can be devastating. Jesus, what, what's going on? Jesus knows Lazarus is sick and he delays. He, he sends his word. Lord, he, he, he says, this sickness will not end in death. No, it'll be for God's glory. Here's the thing. There is a problem and there is a promise. You need to know that when there is a problem, there is a promise from God. You're like, well, you don't understand what I'm going through. I'm, I've experienced tremendous loss. My, my heart has been broken. Well, did you know in Psalms we read that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He's not distant. He's not aloof. He, he saves those who are crushed in spirit. 
You're like, I, I can't hardly provide for my family right now. Well, you could open up scripture and see that God is Jehovah Jireh. He is your provider. You're like, well, I'm a mistake. My parents even told me that they didn't want to have me. You're like, I feel like my life has no meaning. Well, you need to know that you can open up Scripture and see a promise that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you've been made on purpose for a purpose before you were even in your mother's womb. There's a problem. But then there is a, a promise. Yet Jesus delays we, we see that Jesus loves this family, but his behavior seems to contradict that love. Can anyone relate? Like, Jesus, if you loved me, this wouldn't be happening. Jesus, if you loved me, my dad wouldn't have walked out of the house when I was a kid. Jesus, if you loved me, this abuse would have never happened. Jesus, if you, if you loved me, Jesus, if you love me, you would do something right away. Well, well, God's love is not a pampering love. God's love is not like going to the nail salon and getting your nails done. God's love is not like getting your hair done. God's love is not pampering. God's love is preparing. God's love is perfecting. <laughs> you may have been delayed, but I have an announcement. You haven't been denied. There is a miracle in motion. So after two days, Jesus is delayed for two days. He tells his disciples, okay, guys, we're going to go see Lazarus now. And his disciples are like, don't you know it's dangerous? The, the journey we need to take last time in that area, they tried to kill you? Like the threat is real. It is dangerous. It is dangerous following Jesus today, even in this country. Oh, you might get fired for your faith. Oh, you might get canceled for your faith. In other parts of the world, I, I just read a story about a woman who converted to Christianity and she was brutalized because of that decision by a few guys. It, it's dangerous. And his disciples are like, wait, Jesus, I, I don't think we want to do this. Isn't it amazing that these handpicked individuals by Jesus who had traveled with Jesus for years at this point are now taking direction from life's circumstances, not from Jesus. Isn't it amazing how you could be following Jesus for a long time and you're still taking direction from life's circumstances and not Jesus? Jesus says one thing, but you're like, but Jesus, don't you know this? Well, Jesus doesn't understand my boss. Jesus doesn't understand. Who are you taking direction from? <laughs> because it seems, it seems dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, G Jesus is like, uh, guys, Lazarus is sleeping. I need to go wake him up. And the disciples are like, if he's sleeping, he'll get better. That's good. Maybe his mom or his sisters should make him some chicken noodle soup. They, they can get a glass of water purified, put some lemon and some ginger in it, maybe put some apple cider vinegar. You know you have all your things that you think are going to heal everything. He'll get better. His disciples don't get what's going on. We view these disciples as these super saints, Oh, I can't, I can't relate to them. What, you can't relate not understanding what God is doing and saying? We think, oh, it's these amazing individuals. And they're like, they don't, they, Jesus has to tell them plainly, like, listen, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you might believe. Notice he never says he's glad Lazarus is dead. He says, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you might believe. He's talking to his disciples so that you may believe? What is he talking about? Don't they already believe? These individuals left everything to follow Jesus. They left their careers, they left their families, they left everything, they're following Jesus, and now he's like, so that you might believe. He's talking about their belief going to another level. What in your faith, in your belief, needs to go to another level? Oh, you believe that, that you can get truth from Scripture, but do you believe that miracles can take place in your life? 
Oh, you believe that you could be encouraged and comforted in God's house, but do you believe you could lay hands on someone and see them get healed? I didn't play a lot of video games growing up. I just was not really never into video games. I, I played a few. One of them was Super Mario Bros. And remember that? And when you're on the first level, you got to get to the second level. But then you start realizing, oh, there's, there's some secret passageways and you can, you can skip levels. The goal was to keep going to new levels and God wants to get your faith to an entirely new level. We get frustrated with people because they're not growing fast enough. We get frustrated with people because they don't get it. Maybe you're a supervisor and you have employees. Come on, would you just get it? You're talking with your kids. Would you just, you're trying to help them with their homework. Would you just get it? Here's the thing about God. God is patient with you when you're getting it wrong because he's leading you to what's right. So after two days, we're going there. They get there. But at this point, Lazarus is dead. He's been dead for four days. Now, this is significant. Here's why. At that time, there was a belief that a person's spirit, according to Jewish tradition, would hover around the body for three days. So while it had never happened that they were aware of, it would have been a miracle for Lazarus to come back to life those first three days because the spirit would have been hovering. But on the fourth day, it was now impossible. You went through a season where it would have been a miracle, but you had a little bit of hope. You had a miracle, but it would have been possible, but, but now it's impossible. Yeah, the, to reconcile that relationship now is, is impossible. It would have been possible when you first got the doctor's report, but now that it's been confirmed by... a. A second opinion, this other doctor, it's, it's impossible, but God specializes in the impossible. Yes, and Martha comes running out to Jesus. Mary afterwards comes running out to Jesus. Who do you run to in your pain? Or should I say, what do you run to? They run to Jesus. Today, some people, they, they run to an ex-boyfriend. Or some people, they run to a prescription medication, or they run to the dispensary, or they, they run to the bottle. We, we run, run to Jesus. And I know none of you can relate to what they both said. It was almost like they were both having this conversation before Jesus got here. If Jesus had been here, we would never be in this situation. If Jesus had been here, if Jesus had loved us, if Jesus had cared, if Jesus... Had, so they both get to Jesus separately. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Like many of us think, Jesus, if you had been there... I wouldn't be in this situation today. If you had been there, I wouldn't have been fired. Jesus, if you had been there, this would not have, have happened. And then we get a bad case of the if onlys. If only. Oh, if only I was married to a different person. <laughs> Just look cool, breathe, you know. You lost an hour of sleep, blame it on that. If only, if only I had a better boss. If only, if only, if only I was be if only I was born to different parents. If only, if only, if only, Mary actually falls to the feet of Jesus. It says that, that she was crying. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really believe some of the things people post online. <laughs> you see these posts where it's like this girl with like one teardrop going down her face, worst day ever, you know? <laughs> the tongues, whatever that look is, you know? The one teardrop. Like, that ain't tears. Y'all know, like, maybe you, maybe you have a pretty cry, but I'm talking about people who have an ugly cry. You know when it, like the tears are just coming? <laughs> You've seen it with little kids. Where they, <laughs> like, they can't even talk. They're trying to tell you. <laughs> it's not coming down your nose. You know you. It's just like you don't even have a tissue. You're just using your shirt, using your sleeve, right? And tears coming down your face. You can't even get a word out because you are, because you are crying. Just because you have a promise from God does not mean that you will avoid pain. 
in the journey of the promise being fulfilled. Mm. And Jesus is like, take, take me, where's he at? Where's, where's he at? And in the front of this tomb, we find Jesus, is, it's the shortest verse in the English Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus, Jesus wept. Why is Jesus weeping? Like, if Jesus is crying, this must be bad. If Jesus was in your situation and you see Jesus crying, you'd be like, uh-oh. <laughs> we, many would think, which seems to be true, that Jesus, Jesus saw all the hurt around him, and he, he's crying. Now, when it says Jesus wept, the, the word that is used is only used once in the entire New Testament. And it's not talking about a loud cry, which is the other cry. It is a word that articulates a quiet cry, that articulates a soft cry, a subtle cry, that Jesus is there and he is moved most likely by all the hurt around him. Is Jesus crying for Lazarus? You ever think about that? Like, is Jesus crying for Lazarus? He's going to raise him from the dead. So most of the time, I used to think, no, Jesus isn't crying for Lazarus. But I just recently thought, maybe he is. Because Jesus came from heaven to earth, so he knows how good heaven is. And he's about to call Lazarus out of heaven back onto earth. Like, I'm about to bring him back to this crazy place. Maybe he was crying for Lazarus. You have to deal with all these crazy people, all these crazy situations. Ooh, you got Jesus. It, it, it says Jesus. Jesus wept. Some of the people were like, oh, see how much he loved him. Others were saying, oh, could not the individual who healed the blind man, do you remember from last week when Jesus spit on the ground? Made mud, put on. Could he, could, since he did that, could he not have healed this individual? Could he not? Oh, see how much. See how much he, he loved him. G, Jesus says, uh, move the stone away. Move, move the stone. Martha speaks up. But, but Lord, by this time, oh, you should read some of the translations of this. By this time, it surely stinketh. Like it's, ooh, have, have you ever, you ever been near someone and you're like, ooh, maybe, maybe you are right now, you know? You're like, they don't need prayer, they need deodorant, you know? It's like, by this time, because by this time the body was decaying. By this time, you're like, yeah, by this time, the relationship is decaying. I haven't spoken to my kid in how many years? By, by this time, my finances are decaying. By this time, it stinks. You're like, if, to be honest, my marriage is stinks. To be honest, my finances, it stinks. To be honest, it stinks. My oldest, Ian, who I'm flying out tonight with, he grew up playing baseball. And he decided that he was going to play football his senior year of high school. He had never played football before. He's like, what? He's like, I'm six foot six, you know. I'll go light up all these little guys. Oh, he learned it. <laughs> you could be big, but it doesn't mean that you know how to hit. He'd be so tired. <laughs> he would come home after football practice exhausted. He wouldn't even shower. He would just go lay in bed and fall asleep. By the fourth day, it surely stinketh. By the fourth day, it was like, close the door. True story. When he left, moved out to go to college in Arizona, we, were, we tried washing everything. We finally threw away the bed. We threw away the sheets. We, like, it was like, it, it smelled. It, it was bad. It was bad. Mary and Martha are staring at a, at a tomb. No, don't move it. It's, it's over, Jesus. They, they were there with, with Lazarus, maybe, maybe getting oh, a cool wet washcloth putting on his forehead. Oh, we told Jesus, we, we sent word to Jesus, Jesus has got to be on his way. You know how much Jesus loves you. They, they were there when, we, we, when his eyes went, no, 
They saw, they saw life leave, leave his body. They were there, probably wrapping his body in the grave clothes. They saw all of that happen. You, you have seen it happen. You were there when the trauma was taking place. You were there as you were expecting Jesus to step in and restore that situation. You were there and you saw life leave that, that situation, that circumstance. And now it's just, it's, it's staring Staring at, at a grave. Hmm. We're really good with facts. Like describing things. Hmm. It, it's easier hmm, to, to lower our expectation to the reality of the circumstances than to elevate our faith to the reality of the promise. Hmm. And so we're here, all the people around us are great at describing what's going on. And it's true, and I'm, I'm not saying to ignore the facts, I'm not saying to ignore reality. Any Christian who does that is like, what are you doing? But, but what if you acknowledge a greater reality? You see, you don't need a description of the circumstances, you need an interpretation. Ian and I, first stopping in Madrid, Someone starts speaking Spanish to him, his high school Spanish will not cut it. He will not be understanding what's going on. When we go to Oman and Abu Dhabi and Dubai, they start speaking, it'd be like, I don't understand what's going on. I need an interpretation. <laughs> Jesus. Je Jesus. <laughs> Jesus looks up. Hmm. You know how much of our lives we spend looking down? You see people, you could even just tell people who are sometimes discouraged. I'm not talking about having bad posture. I'm talking about being down. And G Jesus looks up. So some of us need to spiritually look up. People say, oh, keep your head up. Like, we, we need to keep our faith up. We, we need to keep our, our faith. I'm talking about having a miracle mindset. Some of us have a mindset, whatever can go wrong, will go wrong, and it'll happen to me. Others are like, we, we, gotta, have a, we gotta have a miracle mindset. And Jesus looks up. We, we, we need to start, start looking for for what God has promised. Some of, some of us are so focused on what I see. But I see this. Jesus is like, move the stone. But I see, I saw all that. I saw this happen. I saw, and Jesus is not arguing the facts. But I see this, but I see this. But what about what God said? You see, there is a miracle in motion because of what God spoke. The miracle began when God spoke those words. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Yeah, we can be like, but look at all that's taking place. Lazarus is dead, and you said Lazarus was not going to die. Is that what he said? He said this sickness will not end in death. And yet some of us are so busy telling, you said this, God, and you said that, and you said that. He never said Lazarus wouldn't die. He said this will not end in death. So if Lazarus is dead, this is not the end. I have an announcement for you. This is not the end. You're miserable in your career right now, but God would say this is not the end. You don't know what to do in this relationship, but God would say this, you want to throw in the towel, but God says this is not the end. You think you're going to live your whole life depressed and discouraged and just feeling like there's that inner tor turmoil, but God would say this is not, this is not the end. He says, he, he, he prays, he says, Lord, I know you hear me. I know you always hear me, but I'm saying this for the benefit of those around me that they would believe, that they would believe. Do you believe? I'm not just saying like, do you believe? Like, oh yeah, I believe in God. I believe that, you know, whatever I believe. I'm like, do you really believe? That, 
Do you remember the faith you had when you first got saved? Someone's like, that was a long time ago. At the nine o'clock, people had to start counting decades, Carlton. I thought they were counting years. One, two, three. Like they, they were talking decades. Like, do you remember? Because like, I, I love when people first get saved. <laughs> because they'll be talking with someone and they'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm just, I, 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 the doctor said, you know, I have this sickness and stuff. And they don't just say, I'll be praying for you. They put your hand on your forehead and just start praying for you right now. And then when they're done, how do you feel? <laughs> Go check it at the doctor. You know those kind of people? The, the kind of people where when they find out that like you have that relationship, there's, there, there's a, a challenge. They don't give you a recommendation on a therapist. They start praying for you and then they send you a text the next day figuring out, hey, has God done it? Has God done it? Like, like, like that kind of faith. Like that, that faith, so, I'm, so that all of you will believe. And he says, he says, Lazarus, Come out. Lazarus, come forward. God is calling you out of some things. God is calling you out of sickness. God is calling you out of discouragement and depression. God is calling someone out of a funk. God say, come out. But we got some of us who are grave dwellers. I like it in here. Why would anyone want to stay in there? Why would every, anyone want to stay in their, in their shell, stay in there? Hmm. Uh, maybe one of the reasons is miracles don't always look like miracles. <sighs> miracles don't always look like miracles. If you watch the award shows today, beforehand with the red carpet, you get people walking up and, oh, who's this dress made by? And fully done up and... That's how we think this should be with Lazarus. But how does Lazarus come out? Like we think Lazarus is like, you know, it's like lights and here comes Lazarus just like walking all like, what's going on people? How you like me now? You know, <laughs> tucks on, hair done. But he was wrapped in grave clothes. Hmm. If you know anything about how they wrap bodies at that time, Maybe it looked like, <laughs> barely, like, you know, like, can't hardly move, it's wrapped tight, like, like, he's alive, but he looks messed up. <laughs> That's how miracles are. Sometimes, like, it's there, but it looks messy. It's there, but it looks ugly, because oftentimes you still look like what you came out of. You still, you, after all those years with that addiction, you've come out, but you're still, all those years of struggling in that area, oftentimes you still look a little bit like what you come out of. <laughs> miracle doesn't, doesn't look like a miracle, doesn't look like I, I thought it would look. And then, and then Jesus tells all the others, take off his grave clothes. Like Jesus could have had Lazarus come out, grave clothes off. Jesus could have done it however he wanted. But he uses people to be part of the miracle. That's why we need to help people who come in here. They, they are a miracle, but they still got issues. They, they are a miracle, but they still got struggles. And we still have our part. You're like, whoa, that... That's grave clothes. Oh, that's kind of like, that stuff was part of the smell. That part was like, this is, but, but, but it's, our, it's our job to help people become all that God's called them to be. We're not here to judge people. We're here to help people, to help remove those grave clothes. God's calling someone out today. He's calling you out. He's calling you to, to step forth into a new season, step forth into a new life.